All right, set box. Um, oh, that's interesting. I forgot the last one when I was opening a draft box that had a pack that had three mythics. I thought that only set and collector boosters did that, but I guess there was a one was a foil, so that would have been the foil slot. But still, I don't think there's two rares in regular draft boosters. And that mythic would take up two of the rare slots, but I don't know, maybe. What do I know? I think I've mentioned many times in these videos, if you've been watching all the videos, which you should to help me with the algorithm, uh, that I mentioned I don't know much. So if you don't like that, I don't know. I'll probably annoy you. Now the last one were Japanese packs with the pull tab, and yes, these are also. And I've mentioned, see I don't like that. It does go around, but I don't know, it's still... See? There you go. Right there. The art card gets it. But it did protect the other cards, so... I don't know. I don't like these pull tabs. Evolving Wilds, Oversold Cemetery. Oh, I don't think I have the, the full art treatment for that one. I think it was just a re no, maybe maybe I did. I don't know. Goose mother. Yeah, this one has a lot more. Thing. And it's going in the same order as the draft pack, unlike uh, Commander Masters. Oh, what's this uh, art card? Nice. I guess I gotta put them down for it. Okay, I see. See, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I figured it out, so I'm wicked smart. Uh, I, I like these things, these little uh, mini game things. Oh, I should probably put those there. Where's the dark card. I'll do better piles this time. Yeah, rare. Well, I should probably take the rare out of this one too. Then we're gonna make separate piles for rares. And I just leave commons and uncommons and that sort of thing. Um, I was mentioning in the other video that I wasn't... Like I had, I, I got some boxes of Throne of Eldraine. Oh, see? I did that. I'm stupid. Um, that's a rare too. Oh well. Damaged! Uh... I mentioned, ooh, Hilda of the Icy Crown, that's a nice little hit. Um, I mentioned that uh, I was um, not the biggest fan of the original Throne of Eldraine stuff. I mean, I liked it, but it wasn't like, wasn't really super wowed by it. Um, and I understand the overpoweredness of the set and how awesome, you know, Oko was before he was banned and stuff like that. I actually don't understand his mechanics without ever bothering to look at the card because what he's banned, so you know. Um, but the other sets in that time period for me were were sets I enjoyed more. Except uh, I guess I enjoyed it more than Theros. Um, but in any case, what I mentioned in the other the other video was that uh, I am sort of really enjoying this set, especially after opening it. And the that angular artwork that it's got started to grow on me as I was opening the box. Ley line of sanctity. Is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. Ha! Neat. There it gives you hex proof. Um Questing Druid. I think I think people are Looking for that card? I don't know. Thought I saw something about that. Maybe I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. As I've mentioned before, telling me I'm wrong is the only way to make me right. Now, the secret is, I don't think I'll ever be right. You know, in the head. On an adventure. Nice. Ooh. Elevator of the Wally Cult, I don't think that's a hit, but it is a mythic, and it's a person named so-and-so of the thing and thing. Like a line of lightning. Ooh, that is cool. 
Hilda's Crown of Winter. Ha <laughs> ha. Nice. Mm. Ooh, Roland, Sign of War. I think that is a hit, because that is, I recognize that so-and-so of such-and-such. That was a nice little uh, pack there. Right? Right? Tell me what your favorite pack was once this video is done. Or tell me now and just assume all these other packs are trash. You know, you can do what you want. I, I'm not your real mom. Intrepid Truffle Snout. Interesting. Butterfox Bodyguard. Huh. Titanic Growth. Spell Stutter. Hmm. Nice. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Ooh, there's a side one. Five whole dollars. Oh, that's the anime art too, sorry. I'll put that back on screen. Nice. There we go. And I banged the camera while we'll doing it. But I opened that pack perfectly without damaging any cards, so see? See? I can learn. I'm not a waste of flesh. Aggravated assault. Well, Okay, wizards, you are trying to, I don't know, make it less of a, I don't know, an offensive game, and you use a term like aggravated assault on a card? It's kind of weird that you didn't think, you know, maybe there's people who were aggravated assaulted, and uh, they'll be triggered, you don't know. The secret is they're not really thinking, they're just reacting. And then someone else in the office is like, this is a thing we shouldn't do. And then you're like, you're right, let's not do it because we don't want bad press. And they don't even, they don't even discuss it, I imagine. Because probably the person that points out maybe we don't need to do it is then called insensitive or, I don't know, something that they, you know, they're not politically aligned or whatever. That's usually how it is. If you don't, if you don't agree with the loud person. Ooh, there's Oko speaking of him. That's some nice little magic thing there. It's just the regular treatment of the card, but you know. So I don't understand. Explain to this to me. So he's he's banned. Is this the exact same card that's banned, or is this a new a new version of Oko that's not banned that will be banned? I don't know. Oh, Kellen the Fae Blooded. I don't think he's necessarily a hit. But yeah, explain that to me about Oko. Because from what I understand, the problem with Oko, yeah, I guess the problem with Oko was Oko, not like one of the other cards where, you know, it's just part of a combo and the other cards are worse, but they didn't get banned. I think Oko needed to get banned, but anyway, is he banned? Is this different? I don't understand how he's, why, why print him again? I mean, okay, someone's gonna say, it's Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, it's probably true. Restless Fortress. Uh -huh. My piles are doing better this time. How do you like how I organize? Let me know. Also, you probably don't like the way I open these packs. The end. I wonder if um, Rudy's going to meme the end. He always has a few cards he likes to meme when he's doing his box openings. That's a, ooh, yeah, that's pretty. Uh, the end seems one, well, I mean, his are also usually innuendos. I don't know, he'll find some way. I have faith in his ability to meme anything. Uh, better chill. Restless Bivouac. Uh, I don't suspect these lands are particularly sought after. Oh, look. Pile Destruction. What's that one? Ah, uh, Pied Piper, I think. Yes. I don't know. I don't know what the card's name is, but that was clearly some guy piping. And there's some rats, and there's some little magic smoke coming out. I should open these packs better. I should. 
Should be paying attention to what I'm doing, right? I should be focused. Spiteful Hex Mage. Ooh. Side one. Five whole dollars. See, if they're gonna make the pull tab, they should make it so that it pull, it does pull all the way to the bottom and doesn't veer off the side. Or again, is that my fault? Embercleave. I don't remember seeing that as a hit. It might have been, I don't know. Maybe. Huntsman, Hunt, Huntsman's Redemption. I like the Saga cards. I don't really use them, but hey, has anyone made a whole Saga card deck? Like, mostly Saga cards? And annoyed your friends because they don't pay attention to Saga cards, really? Except for, you know, was it Urza's? I think that was the only Saga card that people really used. Or maybe were there others? Let me know. I really don't like these full pen. I, I prefer to rip apart. Although, I mean, if you saw my other videos, I'd... Wasn't much better at opening those, I guess. Oh, that was a common. Uncommon. Lord Skitter's Blessing. <laughs> For you rat people. I'm not calling you rats. I mean, unless, unless you've ratted on me. You tell wizards that I said that mean things about them. Not, you know. Oh, is that supposed to be Gawain and the Green Knight? Or the Green Knight from Gawain and the Green Knight? I bet you it is. Nivik's Area of the Fire Mind. That's a nice land, I think. Uh, let's see. Add one colorless to your mana pool, or that. Exile the top card of your library until your next turn. You may cast that as if it's an instant or sorcery. Hmm. I don't know. That seems like a neat little land. So maybe... Wait a minute. The other lands that kind of suck are rare, or maybe they don't suck and I'm wrong, and that sucks. Let me know. Omniscience. Don't remember if that was a hit. Decadent Dragon. People like dragons. Interesting. It's cool art. Oh, you know what? I haven't been paying attention to list cards. Unless there haven't been any list cards. Let me know if I missed li list cards in here. Completely forgot about that. Well, oh, oh, I see. <laughs> that was the list card, and it's an uncommon. Okay, so maybe it's not as... Okay, so the other lands were the lands from this set, and they're not that great, and that's an okay land from some other set. I get it, I get it. You probably already commented that, that I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. That, that's fair. Foil Mountain. Ooh. Oh, you know what? <laughs> it says on, no. Evolving Wilds, Elena, damn it. Okay. So I can look at the back of them and find out what card they actually were. Wasn't paying attention to that. And I know, yes, yes, those art cards have been out for a while. And I did start opening up these set boxes when they first came out, so I should know that. Farsight Ritual. Decadent Dragon. Ooh, that's a nicer version of the Decadent Dragon. Hmm. Wait a minute, what was the other one? Oh, the two different arts. Is maybe that the... Uh, sorry. So, is that the... anime version? Uh, I don't know. That doesn't look anime. That looks more like, I don't know, 1970s Bilbo Baggins Dragon. Smoog. You know. Yeah, might as well look at that now. That's a cool one. What is that? Heart Flame. <laughs> tough Cookie. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. When Tough Cookie enters the battlefield, create a food token. Yeah, yeah. Target non creature artifact you control becomes a 4 4 artifact creature to the end of the turn. Sacrifice Tough Cookie, you gain 3 life. <laughs> I fucking love Tough 
Tough cookie. Oh, uh, now I've been demonetized because I swore. But it was like a positive swear. Oh, yeah, kids might watch this. It's terrible. Can't be advertised on because I made a swear. I'm not monetized anyway. Don't worry about it. Spreading Seas. Beautiful art. Virtue of Loyalty. These virtues are something. Ooh, that's interesting. Huh. That would be a neat full art card. Oh yeah, there's some sort of confetti foil. I guess we'll find out when I open the collector box. Which is... I'll be uploading two days from now. Oh, I destroyed once upon a time. Fucking tabs. Oh, there's another swear. And they put the, the rare in the front. And then, uh, oh, Bristic Study, that's a hit. That's nice. Food fight. So they put the rare, which is usually they put a card, in case you don't know with these tab things, they put the like an art card or a token card in the path of where you're likely to damage the card. So that's the thing that gets damaged if you're an idiot like me op at opening these things. Um, but in this case, that was a rare that I damaged the corner of. So, but what that means is. All is not lost because that goes into the bin for freebies from the patrons of my store. So really it's a celebration whenever I destroy a card, sort of. Yenna Red Tooth Regent. I thought she was important, but she's just a rare. But anyway, I'll put it up in the hands. Restless Cottage. I don't think it's a hit, but it does look cool. So, you know, I, I have a box of freebies I give out at the store because um, I just couldn't be bothered to organize every little piece of a magic set, even though I'm not really opening that many boxes. I guess if I did like a mass box opening, Pyrrhic Rites, um, I guess I'd have to sit down and organize a lot more stuff. But at that point, I'd probably buy one of those machines to do it, because... I mean, I, yeah, you can listen to podcasts and stuff while doing it. It's not really that bad. Well, I've done far worse jobs. But there's just so much other stuff to do at the store. that I, If I did that, there's something more important that I'd be missing out on. So, And giving freebies to my... Oh, Baluna Ground Squall is always nice for them and also for me. I mean, it builds community and that's kind of what you need to do when you own a store. You need a community of people who come and play and, you know, buy, but it just needs to feel like, you know, this is their friendly local game store. And you can be friendly by giving away free things. But, you know, sometimes people who give away free things you can't trust because they expect something. I don't know why that bit of philosophy came up, but uh, just so you know. Sometimes people are trying to hoodwink you with freebies. <laughs> oh yeah, it's the, the whole, um, the whole, you know, drugs, the first taste is free, that kind of thing, right? <laughs> and, you know, you guys do call this cardboard crack. Hey, when did that term first start? Because like, I, I first started first started hearing these uh, games being referred to as such and such crack, like Hero Collects Plastic Crack, which I guess also game, Games Workshop stuff is. Did it start with Games Workshop or did it start with uh, Magic the Gathering? Or did it start with something else? Alright, we're down to four packs, I think? Yes, I did that one perfectly. Bog Wraith, Grasp of Fate, that's some cool art. Italian Kindly Lord, I think that's something. Oh, Agatha's Champion. That's, so Dungeon Dragons did a, a Ravnica campaign setting. That makes sense. 
They did a Theros campaign setting. I mean, I guess that makes a lot of sense because they don't have their own Greek god things, and, and a lot of the early Dungeons and Dragons started off with Greek gods, um, so they, you know. Anyway, they also did uh, two other ones, I can't remember. Um, but they didn't do a Throne of Eldraine, which, I mean, I guess you could say it's, you know, it's in the same high fantasy as Forgotten Realms, or Dragonlance, or a lot of their other campaigns, but then also it's the fairy tale thing. Dungeons and Dragons really didn't do the fairy tale stuff like that. They just do monsters that you fight, right? Alela Cunning Conqueror, I think. Yeah. Anyway, I think Dungeons and Dragons people would eat up Throne of Eldraine or Wilds of Eldraine or whatever. Um, especially uh, a lot of the YouTubers, because they're, they're already kind of doing fairy. Like they, they, they really like fairies. I mean, everybody really likes fairies. It's a thing. Um, but yeah, there's like like Ginny D. I bet you she would eat the eat up the Throne of Eldraine campaign setting. I mean, I don't know if she's if she does a homebrew setting. I, I think she I think she also does games in in regular settings. I mostly do homebrew settings, but I take aspects of it. Anyway, this is what we got out of the set boosters, so I'm going to move on to the collector boosters, and you'll see that in a couple days.